Welcome to the World's Prediction Show. This is episode six, I believe. I'm going a little crazy, but yes, six of the World's Prediction Show. And we have, well, we've jumped forward a little bit. We did not do one yesterday because in discussing this, we decided that the best way to approach it would be to do one more for quarterfinals, which is what we're doing today. This is after the uh, BLG HLE series. And we're going to be looking at the, the next two of quarterfinals. Then probably Monday after Hotline League, we will do one for semifinals. And then probably the Monday after that, we'll do one for finals. So that's kind of fun. It allows us to create some more lineups that have like multiple games involved in it and all that type of stuff. And it just makes it a little easier for everybody. And then you also get us all the way through finals. So uh, looking forward to getting into today's discussion about the last two series. Joining me, of course, Cubby, Chris, and Elias all joining us for uh, this good discussion on everything. Let's get into it, though. So, Cubby, how did yesterday's series go? Uh, honestly, yesterday's series was a bit of a surprise. I really didn't like how LNG drafted. They uh, seemed very stuck on blue side. They were given Yone, and Weibo was prepping counters for it. And then on red side, each game, they took Ari Nocturne, which is a combo that I don't like. Uh, it You miss the, the upfront damage of an Ori plus Nocturne, and then also Nocturne plus Ari is just not as good as Viari. Mm -hmm. But they seemed really tied to this combo. Um, yeah, I, it, it was kind of weird for me. But regardless, uh, Weibo ended up taking these very defensive comps and cores built around like Ash, Ezreal, Maokai, and ended up finding a 3-1 victory, which I thought was a bit surprising on paper. But after I saw the first two games, like even after LNG's win, I favored Weibo to win that series. I, I figured that it was yeah. Weibo's to win or lose. I really enjoyed uh, yesterday's yesterday's matchup. I thought it was pretty fun. I'm glad that it wasn't just a 3-0, but it was a good time. I'm very confused. Somebody in chat says, why is this show in the middle of the series? Uh, I don't believe there's anything Oh, they might be here. catching a replay. I think they're catching a replay and don't realize I think this, they mean like middle over. of the the four series. Of the stage? Oh, so. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, we just we explained that earlier, so it's fine. All right, yeah. so we have, uh, then today we had a matchup. Elias, I know you were really excited to talk about it. Do you want to discuss what you you thought of the HLE BLG series? Um, absolutely. So so it is in combination with the last series, but I feel like um, every international tournament since I've been working on them, it always feels like there's the initial meta, which is semi dictated by the play in teams or whatever the equivalent was at the time uh and, and, and the real meta <laughs> and, and then there's the real meta which takes a little bit it, it's not always like t1 or uh you know the the number one seeds from the lpl will show up and be like this is how you play the game they have to kind of like slosh around in the mud because there's a lot of like uh not uh, a very trusted um information you might like like completely pub stomp a weaker team and be like you know what nocturne ari is godlike and like that happens all the time especially to those stronger teams they will walk away and be like this duo is kind of fucking unstoppable then they face like a real team and then all of a sudden it's like oh fuck this is nothing um and between these two series i feel like we've landed on like cool this is the real meta we are here um, and I'm very, very excited. And that was like super clear with BLG. Uh, I, uh, really, really love how we're going to ignore game two. Cause I feel like in game two, they're going to get the best draft that you possibly can get in this meta. It was the rumble, Sejuani, Yone, Zaya Rakan bot. Like that was so unbelievable to me. Uh, and that game was like done and dusted when Dora just decided to be a brother and like just give it away. Um, but if you look at game three and game four, uh, I really do think we have like sort of settled on how teams want to be brawling early game and then have like a sort of late game insurance policy and how, and I hope this is the case, every match from now on in world is going to be 20 minutes hit 
and you're probably not going to stop fighting until you lose the game. Uh, I don't think that was just reflective of like Tihi LPL love fighting. I do think that's reflective of like these um, objective spawns are so fucking important. And if you don't have these champions that spike at these times, uh, you're going to lose out. Um, and uh, that's especially true in game four, which was if you didn't get the opportunity to watch it, please watch game four. That was so much fucking fun. Um, Dude, it was another- funny because you you said like it, you just start brawling early, but I everybody had hyped up game four, and I went back to watch it uh, as I was making my way back through the series, and like there were no kills for a very long time. There was it was True. like one on one for so long, and I was like, why did everybody say this? Man, this game is so good. I'm bored as fuck. And then we got to the point where like they start flipping barons and. You just see like crazy team fights, and so and then yeah, it just like ramped up the the blood, I guess. The last thing I'll say is that it is so funny every year to see which LPL team kind of baits out Korean teams into like, no, you want to keep fighting, like you just you know, trust me, like this is the one for you, dude. You've got this, and uh, it's made BLG like a tournament favorite for me. Like I, I just. The way that they made HLE just, like, fold under, like, terrible conditions simply because they were too – they felt, uh, you know, HLE felt that they were too far forward makes me go, I was like, oh, BLG, like, might be it. That It makes their – that, that like, uh, region kill matchup in the semifinals super exciting. But I, I won't keep going. Point yeah. is, is we have a great brawly meta um, – how BLG did double AD carry with adding the Kindred was super, super smart. And uh, I'm very excited to see how the rest of the meta settles. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with a lot of that. I really enjoy that. Sorry, I got distracted because somebody was trying to uh, sell me st- free viewers on the Twitch chat. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I think that was a really good, uh, really good series. <clears throat> really fun. I am curious to see if we see the repeat of last year where BLG makes it to semis and then unfortunate things happen to them. But uh, yeah, I don't know if anybody else wanted to chime in on that before on that series. Cause I know you were all pretty pumped about it before we move on to evaluating everyone's lineups and looking at the next couple of days. Okay. Sounds like we are good. So uh, here's what we're going to do everybody because the show is sponsored by prize picks. Thank you, Prize Picks. You can use the link in the description, uh, or you can use the code if you see it on the Twitch chat. You can do exclamation mark Prize Picks, and that's where you can sign up and enter in your lineups. And if you've just started watching the show recently, we've been seeing how all three of these folks can do with their lineups, their predictions for the series. And so we're going to review those now. Then we're going to start to talk about the next couple of games, see who people think is are going to win and who's going to lose. And then we'll make some lineups for that. And that will be the show. So let's start with Elias. Elias, I think you offered a series of lineups or you yeah. offered a lineup that had a bunch of different uh, options in it. How is that going? Um, so first off, uh, what was the, it? You want to my longer flex? The, you, the one that you gave on the show. Oh, the one I gave on the show was uh, this one right here. Uh, and it did not go. Oh, great. right, 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 right. Okay, um, this is what you gave. Yeah. Uh, I was right about Peanut, uh, and that felt like a given. I really did think the Gala thing was a given. I see, like, Kaisa's in the meta. I see uh, MF, and he's picking Jin and doing nothing. <laughs> and I want to fucking die. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how this one played out. It didn't work out. I have some other lineups that are going well, uh, thankfully. But I I thought Gala was like a sure thing. I, I am so blown away. Yeah. All right. So you, unfortunately, my friend, have lost. So yeah. let's go ahead and put the Elias loss up. Okay. Mm-hmm. Next up, we will go to Croissant. Croissant, what has, how's your lineup been doing? I'm trying to remember if it's done by now. Yeah. <sighs> I, uh, the closest I've ever been to winning. So the most painful loss, um, is this the scout, I had brief? scout yeah. as more than 18.5. He had 21. So pretty solid. And then breathe. My logic was he's not going to get NAR, Um, and he's going to have 
trouble impacting the game, and he did on the games he didn't get NAR, but he still got two NAR games, including once on 4-5. So he was less than he's supposed to be less than 11.5 assists got 12 so 0.5 oh, above you were yeah you were 0.5 yeah. off this is so oh, brutal this is for, so tragic for yeah, yeah. I, I mean, everything i said that was going to happen that series happened like lng picked red side they got fucked mm-hmm. for it even though they had side select uh and then they couldn't play skarner but like i just cannot believe still that they gave breathe nar even though it was their most banned champion against him specifically in this 5v5 team versus team lineup so just i hate lng with a passion that's it feels like sometimes in the world's meta like the most important role becomes the role where like you're sort of handcuffed in champion select and it feels like so many teams were so stubborn about top lane across play uh uh, uh, swiss and now yeah i mean the most important role coaching staff (laughs) true all every Every team with a better coaching staff has won so far. So, <laughs> oh, okay. interesting how that works. What does that say about the energy coaching staff this this year? Ooh, world's meta is different, Travis. Than oh, okay, okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so finally we come to Cubby. Cubby, what was the lineup you gave the other day? Uh, I believe mine is still pending. I and... think I think so. Yes. But you have, uh, but some things first, have, pl- so have gone down, right? Yeah, the first square has landed. So the first square was that Tarzan gets more than five and a half kills, which he did. He got five kills in game one. Uh, and I he had three other, yeah. And then the Caria has yet to play. So I, I got to say, I got a lot riding on the Caria square because there was a prize picks promo for Anthony Edwards scoring half a point. And I have Carry a Square paired up with that too. And then I also have Carry a Square paired up with something else. Uh, and it's all more for supports. I will say that, like, I, I think that um, the assist line I found interesting, guys, like as a group, because I know that uh, HOE lost today, but I did hit my square where I had Peanut getting more than 26 and a half assists just purely off this game one and the other game- games being kind of close. So I feel like in best of threes, like you need your team to at least win a game for that square to hit. And then if they win two, it for sure hits. But if you get one game where they don't win, but like it's just close, it it, it hits. So as long yeah. as you don't get blown out in two games, the assist squares seems to like seem to be pretty good where, where they're especially for the teams that are kind of projected to lose because they're that's like a lower margin. Mm-hmm. So I, I know that I got carry at one point with 25 and a half assists. I mean, I, if T1 wins two games, that that hits. If one game is close, that hits out of yeah. out of the three. So I really like the odds on that, actually, uh, mm-hmm. as as this has gone forward. Yeah, I mean, actually, it's it's a fair point because I'm looking at everything, even uh, croissants assist square with breathe was like o- slightly over, and so all these assist squares that we've been picking, scout the scout one went over. Uh, at 21 versus 18 and a half and yeah i seems like it's it's pretty good um and then now it's time to speaking of assist squares so so cubby you don't get a, tra- a crown or a trophy or a thumbs down because you're still pending you get but, a pending he's in play uh twitch chat do you all remember the square the lineup that you helped me construct folks that you helped me f- construct because let's see how you're doing. Oh, brutal, brutal. You, you are out. So we, I ran this as a flex play. So you only needed to land two. You've, we've only seen two of the squares so far and both of them are dead. And speaking of assists, Tarzan, Tarzan, I mean, it was not close for Tarzan. Tarzan was, yeah. you all said less than 19 and a half assists. Tarzan got to 27 assists. Oh, that's like almost double. So, unfortunately, did not come through. Uh, Viper hit 13 instead of 14 and a half uh, or more. So, uh, unfortunately, chat, you all are dead. All right. It failed. Hello, Xbix. Uh, LOL Vidness, thank you for the tier one. Uh, cool. Okay. So, uh, thank you to everybody who's been playing. Really appreciate that. Uh, so far on this episode, we. 
have not had any winners, including chat, but it's been fun to see how everyone's it's, doing. It, I, I've won the first square of my... my yeah, uh, you're not a winner yet. Yeah, uh, that's a good start. It's as good as you can it have. Is a, I mean, uh, I think all these guys hit one of theirs, so we'll see if you can do better than them. All right, we've got two more matches to go for quarterfinals. The first one is Top Esports versus T1. This is probably going to be one of the highest viewed matches, I think, of the whole worlds. Uh, I actually don't know how popular top is in in China, but I'm sure that China versus T1 is going to be crazy. So uh, let's go through the the line here and see who is going to predict what. So actually, let's just do it all once. If you think T1 is going to beat top esports, raise your hand. Only Cubby predictions. Oh, uh, I'll. I'll, I'll <laughs> Wait, what that. happened? So uh, I like I was thinking, thinking. Okay. I, so today's match has changed quite a bit with how I think about things. I think before today's match, I would have said T one for sure. Okay. Um, now I need to noodle on it, but I'm pretty sure it's still T one. Okay. Well, you all unanimously are saying T one, so that's that's what we're gonna lock in. Elias, can you expand on this? Why are you? Why did today's matches per- change your perspective on T1 stuff? Because Jun was put on these like high impact carries and owner could definitely do that. Also Zeus was very impressive and I am seeing how much how much like a pocket pick, well not pocket pick, but a sort of uh, a reliable pick for a top laner can overtake a a draft meta, and I think T1 gets the edge. But I'll call it 3-2. Three, 3-2, two. Three, two. Yeah, I'll okay. call it 3-2. All right. Croissant, where are you at on us? Yeah, I I think the, the hard thing about it that makes it closer for me is TES has side select going to the series, and T1 is kind of locked on their bands. Um, uh, Aurora, Yone, and probably Skarner as well on red side. But I looking closer at it, I was actually surprised to see that Faker's Yon, he hasn't played it all this tournament, but he also has he played it in regionals and he was like 3 0 on it. And he also very similar to Knight, right? Like the reason Knight and BLG got that insane Yon Rumble Sedge comp is because Knight had only been banning Yon and he hadn't prioritized it. And then they caught HLE off guards within game two. And then he won with Silas in game three and Gally in game four. So I think, I just expect that as long as Faker, like, Cream's kind of figured out. His Aurora, really solid. Not going through at all. But outside of that, I do expect T1's depth on their jungle top to just, like, the same reason that I thought BLG was going to win with the Bin Doran matchup, I expect, <laughs> like, Tien to get the bad end of the owner matchup, as he, as he always has. And if he rises above that, it would be like wildly above my expectations and impressive, but I just have T1 uh, winning the series and I'm just trying to figure out like exactly how and how that <laughs> would lead me into my lineups. But I'm pretty, I'm more confident in T1 than TES by a good margin. Um, hmm. But obviously draft on the day can be very sus. So we'll see. Yeah. Kabi, uh, anything you would add to anything that was just said here? Um, or you, you believe in T1 for the same reasons? T1 haven't been playing Nocturne, so, you know, I have a lot of belief in T1. No, uh, I, I do believe in T1. I will say that Faker's Yone, it might have a good record, but he's not actually good at the champ. Uh, I I do think that T1, like, pound for pound against top esports, I, I just, we've seen this matchup a lot, and I favor T1 and this group of players. And if they do win, then Faker gets to continue his coolest streak uh, in, like, just uh, like the legacy stat of Faker's career, if he wins this, he has a few, but it will be that he has never dropped more than one game in groups and that he has never been short of semifinals at Worlds. Like, that's just the most ridiculous stats that you can have in a, a career, like a legacy career over 10 years. Uh, and I think Faker continues it. So, yeah. yeah. Cubby, I, I have a question, and, and I'm sorry if this requires some tape review because it's going to require a tape review for me. How yeah. is Faker's Silas? I have a memory it's of good. being pretty good. Yeah. It's good. And, yeah. And so I think that's actually going to be pretty important, which I'm excited about. Kareem's Silas is also like very good, but that's I just true. favor Kareem on melees. 
Uh, but like Faker, surprisingly, is a good Silas Akali player, and he has played Silas in the tournament. So yeah, cool. All right, so that leads us to our predictions for the final match, which is Gen G and FlyQuest. Raise your hand if you think FlyQuest is going to win. One oh, game. Elias and Cubby, you both think that they're going to... Oh, you're raising a finger. One game. One I'll game. Do... Okay, if I can do that, I'll do one game. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Croissant, you don't even think one game, it looks like. I, I think there's like a 50% chance that they win one game. <laughs> okay. um, but... All right. Croissant, why is it that FlyQuest is not going to win on Sunday? So, speaking of what the world's meta was and is now and nocturne and these kinds of bait things like this year and in a lot of years i think people just start imitating not only what playing teams are there, there's like three main data points right there's what the best teams are playing what the earliest teams are playing and then what's happening in scrims and i think that all lined up pretty well with like nocturne ari is meeting all of those conditions. Nocturne Ari, Nocturne Ori. Bad teams were playing it and still doing pretty well because of the consistency of the combo. The best teams like Gen G, they played Nocturne uh, Ari three out of their five games, I believe, uh, before three out of their four, whatever. And so they were playing, placing a lot of priority on it. My point just being that if they stick with that, I definitely see that being a... And then FlyQuest has a good team fighting composition that can't get picked off. They can win, but I just think that Genji has such a deep pool of things that need to be banned out that they haven't had to show at all. They haven't had to show their... Uh, Ziggs has been 100% banned against them. Their top pool, Keen has just been playing Aurora, and it's like, we know that he can play Cassante. we know that he can play... Uh, he does have some, some holes in like his Jax play, etc., but if he has Cassante, Nara, Rumble, he has a ton of champions that he is just another level on that Whippo's not on. Um, and so across the board, they just haven't had to show anything. And because of that, I imagine it's very difficult for FlyQuest to... Uh, when when they've showed almost everything that they have, in my opinion. But, like, there is a line. There is a world where FlyQuest approaches the draft in a certain way that they can beat Gen G in one game but then I think it's easy to get banned out afterwards. And I, I don't want to go too much in depth to it because if you have NA Hopium, then you wouldn't want like a long analysis of how here's how Genji could totally shut FlyQuest out. Um, but obviously they have like Nunu, Ivern, et cetera. Like they're, but they have some of the pieces, but it's just like over the course of a series, impossible. <laughs> impossible for them to take more than a game. Okay, impossible for them to take more than a game. So if they take two, then we live in a simulation. Okay, good to know. All right, uh, Cubby, anything that is there any hopium for NA fans here? Uh, I think the hopium is that FlyQuest like actually has an identity that they play well. I, I I think that it's better to scale against the best teams in the world. I just do not think that if you go pound for pound in lane, you are ever going to be advantaged or at advantage. Unless something is just so broken that you know you're guaranteed to be able to execute it for you know, uh, in a long period of time. I don't know. Uh, I think the best thing is that FlyQuest has an identity. I think that they are good at dropping stuff and understanding what they can drop to actually get the team fights later on, and they do team fight well. It just sucks that they just so happen to be up against a tournament favorite and one of, if not the best teams in the world that will be able to see most of this coming. So, uh, it, I mean, if any hope, I, I do hope that FlyQuest I can get a game. I don't think FlyQuest has been awful in this tournament. They are still the worst team left, probably. Or one of them, um, yeah. I. I, just I mean, there's only six teams left, played. so. Well, uh, I mean, LNG by the end didn't look too great, so you know, it'd yeah. be what it do. All right, uh, let's do. I, I could ask Elias, but I think he's just going to give us more depression. So, let's. No, 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 no. I, I could give some hopium. Okay. Teams that have been playing in Swiss longer. Have been winning. That's ah, it. I see. That's all I have. <laughs> is that true? Oh, I guess it is true. Yeah, the lower yeah. 
lower seeded teams, I guess, are coming out on top. So for what it's oh worth, that is also like that's a trend when it comes to anything with like a lower bracket or anything like that. It's like yeah. more stage time matters. Like uh, maybe that's you know drawing conclusions on coincidences, but it's it, it, every year that's sort of how warmed it plays up. out. Yeah, I mean they I, are warmed up. I did have a chatter from uh, the Travis Gafford stream come to my stream. Uh, shout out to PP Doc and drop stats that based on the Amazon uh, global power rankings, the Swiss stage, the power rankings went 28, 3, and 1 as there was a tie for, I believe, the G2 BOG match, or one of them was tied. But if you just oh, tied in the rankings, you're saying? Yes. If you went strictly based on the power rankings, they went twenty-eight and three in the Swiss matches, and now they're o two in oh, yeah. this stage. I think kind of I funny, do. So. I do think it's easier to predict Sw- Swiss because there are some lopsided lineups there. Uh, but it is interesting that there's zero two in in semis or quarters. If it wasn't for BOG, they would have only lost one. So yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about lineups and before we get to that folks this is sponsored by prize picks if you would like to follow up uh, i guess it's called tailing if you would like to tail any of the lineups that you're about to hear you can go sign up for prize picks by using my link and using code travis whenever you sign up uh, that link on twitch is pinned at the top if you're watching over on youtube it is in the description once you get over there uh, all you need to do is use my code and when you do, the first time you sign up and the first game you play or the first lineup you play, if you have $5 in, win or lose on that, you're going to get $50 in promo credit. So pretty cool to see uh, that kind of opportunity for folks. It's a cool way for you to go in, just play a lineup. And guess what? Like It doesn't matter if you win or lose on that because you're going to get a bunch of promo credit to keep playing. So Thank you so much to Price Picks for doing this. Also, we are doing a giveaway. Oh my gosh, I need to get the link going. Uh, yes, a giveaway. It's in the chat right now, but it'll also be in the description. We're giving away a hundred free lineups to win up to a thousand dollars with sponsored Price Picks. Please go sign up uh, for that giveaway. I think so far it's been a pretty light sign up on that. Uh, I'm sure it'll get more over time, but you know, maybe it won't. And you guys will have a pretty good chance. I mean, again, with a hundred free winners or hundred winners of this, you have a pretty good chance of getting a free lineup. So go sign up with that link. There's a bunch of, it's, it's very easy to enter. There's a bunch of different things you're probably already doing, like following this Twitch channel, for instance. So go get some free lineups. We're trying to have that. And I think the, the giveaway is scheduled in right before world finals. So it's a cool way where like you can get a free lineup and just have, a free play going into into finals. It's kind of cool. So uh, whenever you have you know FlyQuest and and uh, G- uh, Gen G or well not Gen G when you have FlyQuest and BLG in the finals, then you can have your lineup for FlyQuest winning, and you can win potentially up to a thousand dollars. Anyway, thank you so much to Price Picks for sponsoring the show and for doing that giveaway and for giving us a cool way to sign uh, lineup. So. Let's get into this. All right. Uh, for those that do not remember, it is Flex Friday uh, on Price Pick. So if you enter these in the next, see if I can figure this out. As we record the show, you have eight hours and 24 minutes to enter in a protected play where you can win or get your cash back up to $20. So you can just go throw that in. If you have some promo credit from signing up, this is a really safe play because. You're just going to get the promo credit refunded. It's a free lineup, so you can go do that. And, yeah, pretty cool that they have these Flex Friday promos. So I asked folks to uh, consider making a Flex promo. We'll see if they did. But, Cubby, what is your lineup? Uh, so I'll be honest. There are a lot of squares that I just don't really love uh, at, at the moment. The ones that I do love are Nako and Karia being more in the assist category. Okay. Slow down. Slow I, down. You got Karia and Mako. Okay. More for assists. Gotcha. Now, I don't think that you're going to get full payout on this. 
because it's the same game. Oh, they don't have a note for it. Okay, never mind. Uh, this is going to be mine. Uh, I I really feel like this series, and some of the logic that I was spelling out, I, if you tell me in the first three games of this series that each team splits one and one of the three games is close, does that like feel realistic to you? I think that where they have the assists, like just where the square is at, it's very likely that it, it goes to more. If not, it would take that team getting blown out. And if one of the games is close, each support's getting eight plus assists in those games. If they win one, then there's probably 15 plus. And then like then the, the third game doesn't matter for me. So that's that's why I, like why I land on the square for each support. I really like the more here. Yeah. Hey, fun fact, folks. So this is not a flex play. So it would not qualify for Flex Friday. But one thing it does allow you to do is they get they have these sort of like free squares as I think the nomenclature. Yes. Where every now and then they'll just be like, hey, you can just play this square and it's almost guaranteed to hit. And that the one that they have for this week is Anthony Edwards, which I believe is a basketball player. Yes. For uh Minnesota, which is where Drew is from. I think that's what MIN is, right? He uh, was. The Wolves. Okay, so it's, there's a team called the Minnesota Wolves, and there's a guy named Tim, Anthony the Edwards. Yeah. The Timberwolves. Yeah. And uh, he is, if you just throw him into this lineup, he's a free square. So he's basically guaranteed to hit. So I don't think you can pair it with the Flex Friday thing because uh, it you can't stack promos. But if Cubby is right and this ends up hitting, uh, like Carrie and Mako end up winning, and you've added this Anthony Edwards square in, you go from winning, you know, turning twenty dollars into a sixty dollar win, to turning twenty dollars into a hundred dollar win. So, uh, pretty cool that they have that uh, option as well. I guess if you want to just run as a flex play, then you only need one of these two to hit, and then it turns it into a forty-five, you know, twenty dollar to forty-five dollar win. But yeah, so just wanted to give you all a heads up on a kind of a cool thing that you can do with uh, the power play. Uh, Elias or Croissant, do you either of you have a strong opinion on the Caria Mako assist lineup? No, it's smart, uh, uh, and I just like that Cubby is sharing this. So for anybody who's like new to playing, this is a really good way to think about close matchups, um, where who wins only kind of matters. The kind of games you expect really matters. Yeah, like I, uh, Peanut, despite HOE losing, still was over the assist line. It was only by one, but I believe that like HOE were the favorites coming into this, and Peanut still netted more assists than what the square was at. So yeah. I think it was at 27 and a half. I'd have to check my lineups, but uh, that's a jungler too, where supports are likely to get more assists and be more involved. So, um, yeah. Just an aside, I'm so sad for Peanut. I, I was going to talk about that earlier at the start. but poor I, poor, I mean, he went to another team with Doran, you know. I, Dor, Doran and Peanut got eliminated by BLG again. You know, it, just, it just happens. Yeah. All right. Elias, what is your lineup for us? My lineup does take advantage of one of these quote-unquote free squares, but they're the, like, goblin ones. Um, oh, yeah. So I don't think it's a free square. It's a, like... Sure. Uh, I don't know, a cheap cheap square or something. I they lower the way these goblins work, folks, on the site is they we're, we're giving you all a bunch of advanced stuff here. You there's like friendly goblins and devils or something. I forget the terminology they use, but uh they are ones where they've changed the payouts but given you better or worse odds accordingly. So um that's how that works. But anyway, what do you got? Uh Run it down. Uh, the, please. the main ones is Inspired's kill line was 4.5. Um, if FlyQuest does win a game, which I do believe is not only possible, but like that there's a close game. One of these games where NA Hopium gets a little too high. I think Inspired's going to be the one farming kills. Um, and 4.5 is such an easy threshold to cross three games, even if he's on a Moomoo duty, picks up one to two here and there. Um, Zeus, I think, is uh, like online in a like pretty monstrous way, uh, and his square is at ten. Uh, so I wanted more on that one. Uh, and then Canyon's square was at eight. Um, 
across three games, and then especially after what we've seen from the uh, quarterfinal meta shift, I think we're going to see more carry junglers, and they're going to capitalize on this uh, in a pretty big way. Um, I have no idea who Saquon Barkley is. There's a goblin. I picked it because it's a flex. Wait, and- Cubby, do you have any opinion of this Saquon Barkley NFL square? Um, who, who are they playing this week? The Giants? The yeah. Giants, yeah. Oh, the Giants suck. Um, yeah, I mean, that's not the worst square. He, he's, he's, de- like, he is the starting running back for a good team. The odds that he gets in the end zone are probably, like, I'd say 60, 65, he didn't. He didn't meet this requirement in the last two games that he played. Well, then he's or, due. Or even the, la- the three of the last he's five. He's due. He's due. Naturally, naturally. Uh, um, but yeah. yeah. That's my, uh, that's my setup. Uh, I think right. also. I'm just going to pretend I mean, that this doesn't include the NFL square for ease of. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, still the, 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 the Flux promo, it hits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually. So this is, yeah, this this is a example of a Flex play that you can play with the uh, Flex Friday thing. So uh, everybody can consider that uh, an option. I will say it has a lower payout, but it is protected. So, uh, yeah, kind of cool. Okay, so inspired at more than four and a half kills. Uh, Zeus at more than 10 kills and Canyon at more than eight kills in the first three games that they play. See how that goes. All right. Finally, croissant, what do you got for us? So I, I mean, I consider just picking randomly just to stop getting so close and getting my hopes up using some sort of logic, but I'm going to try one more time. I have Tien as less than seven, uh, and owner as more than 22 assists. So less than seven kills for Tian and more than 22 assists for owner. Because I talked a little bit about how I thought, you know, that matchup would go in general. But um, just the types of champions that I, I expect Tian to have uh, availability for Skarner, Sedge, those kinds of champions. And he has gotten a lot of kills on, like, Skarner, for example, before. But... That was through like a lot of brawling with like the Xin Zhao playing three threes on bot lane. And I don't anticipate that T1's gonna fall into that trap. So if he picks up kills anywhere, it's gonna be on like Zeus playing uh, overly aggressive on three six nine or on Faker making some sort of unfair force error around mid. Just don't expect him across the first three maps to uh, really be hitting that number and for owner to rack up a lot of those assists. And then uh, I have quad Masu combo as Less than fifteen point five. Oh, uh, okay. So you added in the the a combo. Okay. So quad Masu combo at less than fifteen point five. I yeah. I will say I really like the Faker Guma combo square. I know that T one hasn't exactly been playing through bot, but I feel like that margin is just too low for a messy series where personally I have T one favored. Okay. So uh, would at at this TN less than seven kills, owner more than twenty two assists, and quad Masu less than fifteen and a half kills. Elias or Cubby, would you tail? Um. So I'm gonna go square by square. Quad Masu less. Yeah. Honestly, yes. Less, uh, owner more. Yeah. Ten. Yeah. 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 yeah I tail. Okay. Yeah, I'm in. So you guys are feeling good about this. Yeah. I don't know right. how Fly, FlyQuest are going to 3-0 and get less than 15.5 kills, but I'm really excited to see that. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, folks, in order to, to use the Flex Friday thing, you do need to opt in, which you can do from the promotions tab. So that's just hanging out on this this little promotions thing. You can it opt in also will can... give you the option the way it does now with that box if you take three. Yes. Yes, this this would be it. But you need to yeah, opt yeah, in yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm One not question. right now, so that's my sense. How does the... So you said you can't stack, like, the free squares with the Flex Play yeah. or Flex Friday. They're both... But panels, how, does yeah. the, how does the Ant Edwards square work at all? It's he just, just needs to score a basket, and then you win the square. And so it's just free... Yes. Okay, but you can't combo that with the Flex Friday. No, because no. then you're using two promos which i think makes it 
uh, yeah. it's like so, using two coupons, you know, like most places won't let yeah, you yeah. use two promos. So, so the trade off, what would Elias and Cubby, you recommend that which promo I use? Because one is just to cover, it's just insurance, right? For you, use if both, you get two out of three. Yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. And then the Ant Edwards square moves it to times 10 or something like that. I think what it is, is uh, like, in my opinion, I would, I would guess that you would base it off of confidence. So if you want to make like a really risky play that you're not, you know, if you're just like, Oh, this could win. I don't know, but it's kind of goofy. Then use the flex play or use the protection for that. Um, If you want to, if you have a lot of confidence in something, I'd use a free square to like bump up the payout, you know. Mm-hmm. That's that's the right way to. It's two different ways to sort of protect. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's where we're at. Okay. So, so uh, locking croissants. It's less than seven kills for TN, more than twenty-two assists for owner, and then less than fifteen and a half kills for quad and Masu. Cool. Why do I feel like I'm forgetting something? Either way, if you want, you can go sign up uh, for the Price Picks site, and you can tail if you agree with or disagree with any of these folks. You can tail or take the opposite of yep. theirs, and then let us know in the Price Picks channel on Discord, and you can talk to people. All I think Cubby, I don't know if Croissant's in there, but Cubby and Elias are both in there, and you can make fun of their picks, or you can agree with them or disagree with them, and whatever so go go join the price picks channel in our discord it's just discord.gg slash travis uh that is the show everybody we'll see how this goes hopefully hopefully everybody's wrong and flyquest wins but uh that's kind of a long shot and we're gonna be doing this show probably monday after hotline league assuming that this is good for uh Elias and croissant i think it is because based off of what they said previously and we'll then be reviewing these lineups and we'll be making some lineups for semis because price picks has been getting those up pretty quick so i think they probably will have something by then so we'll be able to do a show either way thanks everyone thanks to price picks go enter the giveaway and we'll see you next time